Hi, this is Sammy again. I just want to bring to your attention that there's a video that's going around and it's showing you how to add fractions, but don't follow that method. That method is misleading. So I'll show you why it's misleading. Um, so here's the method that is being shown on uh, some YouTube videos um, on how to add fractions. It works. But we're not learning anything if we're doing this with fractions. We're not learning anything about fractions. And uh, so what we, we're not learning how to do common denominator. We're not learning how to reduce and lowest common denominator instead of just common denominator. So what they do, they tell you to multiply these two right here and you get 15 and that's your common denominator. And then you multiply this into here, you get six and you write that on top of here. And then you multiply this here, the five into the one and you put your plus sign and you get five, so 11 over 15. Yes, that's the right answer. But if you follow this, you're not learning anything about fractions and that's why this shouldn't be taught. This is just, it's, well, we could say this is a shortcut sometimes that you could use and it will give you the right answer. But now let's say if we wanna do this, the same thing here, I'm gonna go that way, and then I'm gonna go that way, and then I'm gonna have to find my common denominator and multiply eight times 16 to find my common denominator. So I'm getting into huge numbers here, 16 times three, eight times five, you know, you're gonna get big numbers here, big numbers there. So that's why that's not how we should learn how to add fractions. If we wanna learn how to add fractions, the first thing we learn on how to do the common denominator. How do we do the common denominator? You know, some teachers, they tell you to bring all, to break all this into the prime numbers and all of that stuff. And come on, this is gonna take a long time to do that. The greatest common or the lowest common factor, or sorry, the lowest common denominator is you always go to the biggest number is 16. Check if the eight go into 16. If it does, perfect. This, then, then this is my common lowest common denominator. So then I just write 16 right here. You know, I had to multiply this by two to make common denominator of 16 and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So what I end up getting 16, I only have to write it once. I don't have to write it twice because it's common denominator. Then just these here, which is two times three is six minus, and this is gonna stay the same because it already uh, has the common denominator. And the final answer will be one over 16. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why you shouldn't be using the method that's shown above. And how about if you do three fractions now? How are you gonna do this rule? You know, you might be able to find the common denominator when two times five is 10, 10 times 20 is 200. Is this our lowest common denominator? Definitely not. This is not our lowest common denominator. Our lowest common denominator, as I always show my students, you go to the biggest number is 20. Does two go into 20? Yes. Does five go into 20? Yes. Perfect. This is my lowest common denominator. Okay, which is 20. But if, if you're going to do this, like how are you going to do this cross thing and all of that? It doesn't work. This is just misleading. You're not teaching fractions when you do that. You could say, oh, this is a shortcut if, you know, whatever. And now here, all you need to do is just multiply this by 10 to make it 20. Then you do the same thing to the top. And you have to multiply this by four to make it 20. Then you do the same thing to the top, write the 20 ones. Don't write three different fractions, just write it once. Then 10 times one is 10 plus three times four is 12 minus that's just gonna stay nine. And therefore we end up with 10 minus nine is one plus 12 is 13 over 20. I just take a shortcut. So 10 minus nine, I did that. 10 minus nine, I did that first to make the adding easier, you know, okay, 10 plus 12 is 22, minus nine is 13. Yeah. Now, how about if let's say the fractions ended up, um, I'm just gonna show you because I, I like you to learn how to do the common denominator or the lowest common denominator in an easy way that rather than, you know, I've seen some videos that tell you, you know, breaking them down in prime numbers and this and that. And I've seen, no, just always go to the biggest number. And let me show you one more example. So here's the last one that I'm gonna do for you. So adding and subtracting fractions is the same thing. You, you follow the same rules, common denominator, this, that. So here, 
you, again, when you're finding the lowest common denominator, long line, you go to the biggest number. Does four go into six? No, it doesn't. Evenly, it doesn't. Yeah, that's what I mean. Does it go in it? Evenly, no. So now you go to the six and find the next multiple to six. The next multiple to six, basically you're adding six to the six, you get 12. Does four go into that? Yes, beautiful. Then 12 is my lowest common denominator. If it didn't, then you just go to the next multiple, which is 18 and C. And then if you go to the next multiple, but since 12, yes, four goes into 12, then 12 should be my common denominator. Now I know I have to multiply this by two to make it 12. I do the same thing to the top. I have to multiply this by three to make it 12. I have to do the same thing to the top. Now 12 here, both of these are 12. So that's my common denominator. I write it once. Two times five is 10 minus three times three is nine. And my final answer is one over nine. Again, one more time, don't use this. That's just a shortcut that's gonna get you in trouble. You know, fractions, you don't only do them in grade four or grade five, whatever country or, or, or province you're from. Some start earlier than others, but don't use this method. Like this method, definitely don't use this method. It's just misleading. It's a, it's a quick fix, but it's, uh, it doesn't serve you on a uh, long term. Okay. Hey, thanks again for watching. Till next time. Bye bye.